Once your students finish the Iowa assessments, complete or core battery, you will soon have data reports in hand. Each report contains scores such as a percentile rank, a raw score, a standard score, a stay nine, and other scores. So what is the importance and usefulness of each score? Before analyzing the reports, it's important to understand the meaning of each score to gain effective and practical insights to grow the student learning in your district or diocese, school, or classroom. The Iowa assessments are psychometrically sound assessments that measure students' progress on the learning standards taught in school. All three fixed forms, E, F, and G, test foundational and higher order thinking skills in several school subjects and can be used to identify individual, class, grade level, and school level strengths and weaknesses by skills to make relative comparisons, inform instruction and placement decisions, monitor growth, implement RTI, evaluate programs, predict future performance, and meet district and state education requirements. The Iowa assessments are norm referenced. Assessments that are norm referenced compare and rank a student's performance to how a sample of students in the same grade level, tested in the same content areas, performed on the same test. A norm referenced assessment undergoes a norming process that includes statistical methods to determine accurate scores for the student. Norm referenced scores include a grade equivalent score, percentile rank, normal curve equivalent score, a standard score, and a stay nine that show where a student's achievement lies compared to others on a bell curve. Norm reference scores can show the amount of growth occurring over time and help identify strengths and weaknesses, determine instructional strategies for an individual or group of students, decide student program placement, and evaluate curriculum changes. The Iowa assessments are also valid and reliable assessments of achievement. Validity is a term used to describe the accuracy of alignment of an assessment to what it measures. The Iowa assessments are valid because they purposefully and accurately test what they set out to measure, that of student performance and knowledge of education standards to move student learning forward. They also provide appropriate evidence to support the interpretation of scores according to the given reports because the research conducted on the items matches the measurement of the items towards the standards. A reliable assessment is one that provides consistent results from one administration to the next with the same student in the same circumstances. Reliable assessments are dependable as they measure student knowledge and skills. The Iowa assessments are reliable in that a student who takes the assessment again or a parallel form within the same time frame will likely earn very similar scores. The concept is based on a reliability coefficient from 0 to 0.99. The closest the reliability coefficient is to 0.99, the more reliable the assessment. The reliability coefficients of the Iowa assessments range from 0.71 to 0.98 depending on the form and level administered, but most of them are in the 0.90 range. Other Riverside Insights assessments that are norm referenced, valid, and reliable include COGAT, Lagramos, Iowa Flex, Iowa Algebra Aptitude Test, EasyCBM, and the GMRT Reading Assessments. The items on the Iowa assessments contain over 20 years of research, including a careful review of state standards, surveys from classroom teachers, reviews of curriculum guides and instructional materials, student responses from extensive research studies, and field tests of the items to ensure that they measure yearly growth and are vertically aligned and accurately scaled. The items underwent numerous rounds of review from research professors at the University of Iowa content specialists at Riverside Insights, and panels of educators to ensure that the content is accurately aligned to standards, is free from bias, provides accurate evidence to support interpretations relative to growth, provides predictability towards college readiness, and effectively evaluates curriculum, instruction, and school programs. 
The Iowa assessments are accurate and dependable measures of student achievement. The reports for the Iowa assessments complete and core batteries provide student data at three levels. First, scores are provided at the highest overall level, the subject area administered. A subject is a division or discipline of learning in school. Tested and reported subjects for Iowa Complete are reading, language, math, science, and social studies. Students taking the Iowa Assessments Core Battery are tested in reading, language, and math. A domain is a group of related standards in reading, language, math, science, or social studies. Iowa Complete and Core Assessment domains include vocabulary, usage and grammar, number sense and operations, and the other domains listed here. Assessed domains in science and social studies for Iowa Complete include life science, earth and space science, and physical science, as well as history, geography, and economics, to name a few. Each question within the Iowa assessments is aligned to a standard. Every standard contains specific knowledge that a student should know and actions that the student should be able to do to grow their learning of concepts. These reported skills, located on the Building Item Analysis Report, for example, include using context to determine meaning, recognizing stated information, making predictions, performing math operations, correctly measuring items, and interpreting laws and principles of government, among others. Many of the Iowa Assessments reports identify the number of questions within each domain at each of three cognitive levels. These three levels speak to the rigor of the Iowas, asking students to perform a skill within a standard based on complexity demand. These are similar to Norman Webb's depth of knowledge levels. Skills or tasks at the essential competencies level ask students to recall facts, definitions, or vocabulary words, complete a one-step procedure, or label a diagram, for example. This cognitive level is the lowest complexity ask of a student and comprises about 20% of the questions on Iowa Complete and Core Batteries. Tasks at the conceptual understanding level require students to go beyond the basic knowledge of concepts in the standard to infer, interpret, compare and contrast two ideas, and solve problems used involving multiple steps. This cognitive level asks students to apply their knowledge, and it comprises about 60% of the questions on the Iowa Complete and Core Batteries. Tasks at the extended reasoning level require students to think critically about the concepts and draw conclusions, determine patterns within a set of numbers, organize information, make predictions, and develop strategies to connect ideas to solve a problem. About 20% of the Iowa Complete and Core Batteries questions are at the extended reasoning level. As you begin looking at the Iowa Assessments Reports, you may notice some unfamiliar terms and scores. The first of these terms are the number attempted and the percent correct for students in your building, class, and the nation. Number attempted appears on the individual performance profile report, while the percent correct score displays on the building and class performance profiles and the building and class item analysis reports. The number attempted defines the amount of questions a student answered within a tested domain and cognitive level. It shows if the student answered the maximum number of questions on the assessment or if the student left questions unanswered. And it is useful in determining why a student's score may be particularly low in a tested area. Isabel is a third grader who took the Iowa Assessments Form E Level 9 Complete Battery in September. Of the 41 items on the reading assessment, she answered all 22 of the informational questions and all 19 literary questions on the assessment, indicated here on the report. Her percent correct in reading information is 68%, which when compared to the percent correct across the nation, those students in the same grade level who also took the same assessment 
Isabel scored four percentage points higher than the average percent correct in the country. In the reading literary domain, she scored a 79%, which is 10% higher than the average percent correct for the nation. The percent correct score is the percentage of questions the student answered correctly on the assessment and is found when dividing the number of correct responses by the number of items in a subject domain and multiplying by 100. At the class, school, system or diocese and national levels, percent correct is reported as an average percentage. This score is used to summarize a student, class, school or system levels performance compared to a normative group in a given content domain and provide educators with an initial indication of the student's or group's relative strengths and weaknesses. Isabel answered more reading literary questions correctly than informational questions. Practice activity topics she could do or continue working through in the classroom might include main idea and details, drawing conclusions, identifying text features, and analyzing literary elements such as characters and setting. A prominent score you will notice on the building and class performance profiles, class summary, and the list of student scores reports is the standard score, notated as SS. The standard score is a three-digit number displayed for each tested subject and domain that indicates where a student's achievement is on a continuum or scale based on the Iowa Assessment's growth model. The standard score measures a student's amount of academic growth from one year to the next, answering how much growth over time has a particular student shown in mastering the standards for a specific subject and domain. Looking at a student's standard score within the same two time periods, for example, September of last year to September of this year, one can determine if the student is progressing at the rate expected for the type of instruction he or she is receiving, as well as the effectiveness of school programs in which that student is involved per the subject area. On the list of student scores report, we see that Isabel earned a standard score of 191 in reading when she took the Iowa assessments in September. When she takes the Iowas again next September, she is expected to earn a standard score of 211 based on her ability to learn the reading standards at the same constant and consistent rate the rest of the school year. If her standard score is higher or lower than 211 next fall, then we know she is grasping the reading standards at a faster or slower pace respectively. Her long-term progress of mastering content in reading from one year to the next can be viewed on the longitudinal profile report. Annual growth usually slows over time, so students at the lower grades tend to have a larger increase in standard scores compared to students in the higher grade levels as time progresses. Notice on the building and class performance profile and the class summary reports that standard score is stated as average standard score for the group of students being reported. Looking at the standard score the following school year at the same point in time, again September to September for example, for this cohort, an administrator can view the rate at which a group of students is learning content. The Norms and Score Conversion Guide can assist with the process of determining the expected standard score for the group the following year. The standard score can be converted to a national percentile rank. As noted here, Isabel's standard score of 191 places her in the 75th percentile. The Norms and Score Conversion Guide helps us see this score as well. The next score you will notice on the building and class performance profiles, the class summary, the longitudinal profiles, and the list of student scores reports is the student's local or national percentile rank, a status score notated as LPR or NPR. All students receive a local or national percentile rank score for each subject and domain assessed. It is a score of 1 to 99 that identifies the relative position or rank of the student score compared to the scores of others in the same grade level who took the same assessment at the same time of year. Percentile rank is out of 100 and it's often viewed on a bell curve. 
The local percentile rank is based on norms at the district or diocese or school level, while national percentile rank compares the student's performance to others in the same grade level tested in the same content areas throughout the nation. It is a converted score from the student's standard score and is useful to show the student's achievement in either tested area and identify a student's strengths and weaknesses among contents. The lowest percentile rank indicates a weakness in that area, while a high percentile rank indicates a strength for that student. Additionally, the score is useful for accurately placing students in RTI tiers. We see that Isabel earned a standard score of 191, which places her in the 75th percentile. Her reading NPR means that she scored higher than 75% of the students, or 75 out of every 100 students, who took the reading assessment. 25% of the students who took the same assessment in the group scored higher. NPR scores tend to cluster at the 50th percentile, with fewer students scoring at either ends of the bell curve. Another score that you will notice on the Longitudinal Profile, Class Summary, Performance Profiles, and List of Student Scores reports is the Grade Equivalent Score. The Grade Equivalent, or GE Score, identifies where a student's achievement is on a continuum by subject and domain levels. It is stated as a decimal number, with the first number representing the grade level and the second number indicating the month in school. Like the standard score, the GE score is useful for measuring student growth year over year to answer how well is the student growing with learning and understanding the academic standards. We see that Isabel earned a GE of 4.1 in reading in the fall of third grade. Her score means she scored similar to how a typical fourth grader in the first month of school would have scored had that student taken the same assessment. Her expected growth, and thus her GE score next fall after one full year of school, is 5.6 in reading. A score higher or lower than a 5.6 next fall would indicate that she is growing at a faster or slower rate respectively in her mastery of the reading standards. GE scores can be compared year over year longitudinally to determine if the student's annual progress meets or exceeds an average amount of growth per year. A GE score is not related to the grade level of coursework the student should be completing. The local or national STA-9 score is a normalized standard score that identifies a student's status or relative rank of achievement on the bell curve. Further, STA-9 are a grouping of percentile ranks that indicate the student's level of achievement on the assessment compared to students in the same grade level who took the same test. The STA-9 score is represented as a number between 1 and 9. The percentile ranks are grouped in threes and are noted as achievement below average for scores of a 1, 2, or 3, average achievement for scores of a 4, 5, or 6, and above average for scores of a 7, 8, or 9 on the assessment. An average STA-9 score is 5 and the standard deviation is 2. STA-9 scores can be converted from a percentile rank, and in the case of Isabel, we see that she earned a national percentile rank of 75, which places her achievement in the 6th STA-9. STA-9 are useful in quickly grouping students and thus are a status score like an NPR score and thus should not be used to describe the student's developmental level or growth in a subject or domain. The Normal Curve Equivalent Score, abbreviated NCE, is a normalized standard score that is useful for determining the amount of growth incurring among students in a group or among cohorts over time. It is considered a growth score in that trends can be analyzed from the scores from one year to the next for the student or group to note how quickly or slowly the student or group is learning subject or domain information. The NCE score is also useful to evaluate the effectiveness of school programs. Administrators can view the student or group of students' NCE scores and determine the amount of growth that has occurred in a particular area to identify needed improvement. On the Iowa Assessments Reports, 
The normal curve equivalent score appears on the list of student scores and the performance profile reports. It is similar to a percentile rank with a score ranging from 1 to 99 with a mean of 50 and standard deviation of 21.06. But unlike percentile rank, NCEs are within equal intervals. A normal curve equivalent score can be averaged when describing group performance or when checking growth over time. Isabel earned a normal curve equivalent score of 64 on the Iowa E this September. After she takes the Iowa assessments again, the NCE can be reviewed to determine the amount of growth that occurred in reading, which can then be compared to her peers who also took Iowa during the same administration and can be averaged in within a group's NCE to determine growth for the student cohort. The last row of scores displayed on the list of student scores report is the raw score, notated as RS. The student's raw score in each subject and domain defines the number of questions the student answered correctly in each tested area. Isabel achieved a raw score of 30 in reading, meaning that she got 30 questions correct out of 41 items on the reading assessment. The value of knowing a student's raw score is significant when converting it to a standard score, a grade equivalent score, or a percentile rank. Taking Isabel's raw score and converting it to a standard score, we see that she scored a 191. As we saw earlier, we will want to test her again in the fall, or also perhaps in the spring, to view her rate of growth in reading to determine the pace at which she is learning the reading standards. It's important to note that raw scores can vary according to the number of questions on the subject, or domain assessed, as well as the complexity level of the questions. Thus, a raw score of 30 in reading does not equate to a raw score of 30 in math. The amount of higher complexity questions on the assessment also plays a role. Additional information about each of the terms described in this video is located in our ancillaries within Data Manager. Access them digitally through the Digital Resources area. Our research and development guide provides a comprehensive look at how the Iowa assessments were written and includes detailed information on how the Iowas are valid and reliable assessments. To learn more about the norming process with the national comparison samples and studies and accuracy of Iowa scores, item difficulty, and item discrimination, consult the Form E, Form F, or Form G technical summary ancillary. The score interpretation guides divided into levels 5 through 8, 9 through 14, and 15 through 17, 18 discuss the reports and scores within the platform, how best to use the scores for district, school, and classroom purposes, the accommodations and modifications in alignment with the scores, and communicating the results to stakeholders. The Data Manager Iowa Assessments Reporting User Guide provides pathways to access and print Iowa reports, as well as the definitions and descriptions of scores on the reports. The Norms and Score Conversions Guide is useful during the hand scoring process and when converting scores, such as a standard score, to a percentile rank. We are excited you are embarking on your journey of interpreting the Iowa reports for practical purposes. We appreciate your commitment to our products, and we hope we can provide additional guidance for you in the future to elevate the potential of every student. Thank you.